Hey everybody, this is Pastor. Good morning. I wanted to send you a greetings today. I wasn't able to make it for the 2020 leadership class this morning at 5.30. Normally every Tuesday morning we do that. I've been fighting a chest cold and I uh, took some medicine last night and it knocked me out. And so I wasn't able to get up for the meeting, but I'm up and at it today and I'm pushing forward and uh, feel a little bit better than I did yesterday. Yesterday was kind of a tough day. I try to get to work today and get all the things that I need to get done done. But I wanted to talk to you today about grace and I'll give you a couple of highlights, some th things that have been uh, in my heart and my spirit. And one of the things that I try to do every morning um, is to pray in the Holy Ghost, to pray in the spirit according to Romans 8:26. Romans 8 26 says likewise the spirit helpeth our infirmities for when we know not what to pray the spirit prayeth through us with groanings that cannot be uttered and so one of the things that I've learned in that passage of scripture that has literally transformed my life is where the Bible says the spirit helpeth our infirmities when he talks about infirmities he's talking about not just um, a, a bad feeling in you but also a spirit of, of, of illness or sickness uh, the Bible says that the Spirit helpeth my weakness. It helps my infirmities. It helps my sickness. So when I pray in the Holy Spirit, I'm building my spirit man up. The, there's a passage that talks about um, that what that does. And when you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, you begin to build your inner man up. You're, you're doing house repair. And so the reason that I believe that many of us are tore up vexed in our mind, overthink things, are analytical, are um, at odds with people, are just festering in our spirit, is because we haven't prayed in the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, likewise, the Spirit helpeth our infirmities. For when we know not what to pray, he prays through us with groanings that cannot be uttered. And when you begin to pray in the Spirit, you begin to rebuild yourself. And what did matter no longer matters. And what was a heartache becomes uh, a light thing. What was a heavy thing on your spirit and your mind is now released because the Spirit has done prayed through you. So one of the things that I try to do every day is I try to pray in the Holy Ghost. And I not just once, but continually. I'm praying in the Spirit, maybe in, under my breath or just in my mind. But I'm praying in the Spirit. And I love those times when I'm just in an open place where I can just pray out loud and just talk to God through my spirit. And so thankful, I'm so thankful for the gift of the Holy Ghost. And for those people who think that there is no such thing, I'm thankful that I've been able to tap into the Holy Spirit and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost that Jesus promised he would baptize us in and fill every believer with. So, thank, so thankful, I'm so thankful today for the Holy Spirit because he knows how to refresh our spirit and we would accomplish so much more when you head out for business, when you head out for work, when you head out to do an assignment or work on the job, whatever it is you're doing, you would experience so much more freedom and so much clarity in the spirit when you pray and start your day or start your time in praying in the Holy Ghost. When you pray in the Holy Spirit, you are building your house. You pray in the Holy Spirit, He is building you up. He is refreshing you. He's rewiring your thinking and the stress and all of the anxiety and all of the things that you uh, just cannot function in. That stuff just begins to dissipate. I promise you, if you will pray in the Holy Spirit every day and, and pray continually even, that the Spirit of the Lord will touch you. But let me say something to you because I live out of Romans 8, 26. That's where I have found, a, I have found in Romans 8, 26, a sweet place in the Lord. And it has kept my mind, especially as a pastor, not just as a Christian, but as a pastor, it has kept my mind. Because anytime, um, you know, you're dealing with people, you're dealing with stuff, you need the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. And that does that doesn't always come through book reading. I believe the Spirit will bring you to a scripture and the scripture will make revelation of this. The Spirit will make revelation of that scripture. But when you pray in the Holy Ghost, when you pray in the Spirit, you are building your house, your oka de mio, the Bible says it's house building, and you're repairing whatever's weak, whatever's infirmed. That's what the Spirit does. Not only 
has that passage been a lifesaver for me and has been my go-to on the daily and uh, and but also there's a passage out of Romans 12 you know Romans 12 is is a is a passage that every church I think every church should live out of Romans chapter 12 and we should teach our people how to function out of Romans 12 in Romans chapter 12 where uh, where Paul says to us, and I believe it was verse six when he started talking to us, where he talks about that God would give you the grace to do things well. Um, and he says, if you prophesy, then speak with faith. If you if you uh, are serving, then serve people well. If you're teaching, then teach well. If you're encouraging people, be encouraging. If that's what God's called you to do. If he's called you to be a giver, then give generously. And, and there's a whole list there of the things that Paul says, if God give you the grace to do it, do it well. Take the responsibility seriously. Um, then he would go on to talk to us about love, and he would say that we don't pretend to love people, but really love them. Love them with true affection. Love them with purity of heart, uh, a genuine affection. He said, "Be rejoice in confident hope." He said, "Be patient in trouble, and just keep on praying." And I love this passage because. I don't know how many times I've read through Romans chapter 12, and I usually start off with verse 1. You know, we do present our body, holy living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, and that's good. But there's, as you go down through there, it's like a guideline of how ministries and churches and people as Christians should live their life. And he says to help people that are in trouble and practice hope and patience and live in harmony with each other. But I love even what he says. He says, don't act like a know-it-all. Paul says, don't pretend to know it all. Don't walk around like you know everything and can nobody add to you. Um, and that you're always right and no, and everyone else is always wrong and that you 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 won't apologize and you won't, uh, you, you know, you're just on this course in your mind that, that you're right. Uh, don't think like you're a know-it-all is what Paul said. And then he went on to say, be honorable. He said, honor always, 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 honor and it's so important you know when you think about all of the things that he's telling he said god's going to give you grace to to live this he's going to give you grace to function in the gift he's called you and then he says you know honor and before he closes the chapter in romans chapter uh chapter uh 12 he goes on to say something like um you know uh, if you see somebody hungry feed them if you see somebody that's in need minister to them um, you know, you, you know, give to them. If it's in your hand, if they're thirsty, give them something to drink. If they're hungry, give them something to eat. That's what he was saying. And he said, even people who have been hateful towards you or who have, who have done things wrong towards you, he said, if you will feed them and, and give them something to drink, <laughs> listen to what Paul said. He said, you would heap coals of fire on their head. He said, literally, uh, you would, shame them with coals of fire on their head because you are operating in love not fake love but not just uh, love with lip service but love that gives them something to eat and gives them something to drink that you're heaping coals of shame on their head and he would he, you know Jesus would go on to tell us Paul's writing said that God said he would he would take revenge and he would deal with whoever it was that had done you wrong. So don't worry about that. You just keep heaping those coals of, of uh, on their head. Feed them, uh, uh, give them something to drink. And and he, God said in this passage that he'd give you the grace to do it and to do it well. And I love the last part because he says, don't let evil conquer you, but let love, um, uh, let love conquer evil with good. Be a person that is refreshing and, and walking in the grace of God. And I would say to you today, extend grace as many times as you can. Always lean on the side of mercy. And here's why, because God has been merciful to you. And you, when you extend mercy to people, mercy will come back to you. When you send grace to people, extend grace to people, grace will come back to you. So do it and do it with a heart of purity. Extend grace, extend mercy, and always remember there will be a time in your life that you may need grace and mercy. So extend it and extend it well. Live out of Romans chapter 12. In fact, I encourage everybody today, go read that 
And then I encourage you to pray, Romans 8, 26. Begin to pray in the Spirit and let God rebuild your house. If you started this day off rough and you said, man, I feel like I woke up on the wrong side of the bed, go to the janitor's closet at work and get, al get alone with God. Get shut in with God in a secret place. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Put your face in a towel and wail. I mean, whatever you got to do. It just cried out to God, and I promise you, if even if your circumstance don't change, you will change. The Holy Spirit will change you on the inside. And all of that list of things and all these attitudes that you had, that stuff won't even matter. So are you living in the grace of God to do what he's called you to do? I believe that we can all do it, and we can all do it better than we're doing it now. I hope you have a tremendous day. If you didn't watch this video from the start, go back and watch it, but I hope you get a chance to hear what the Lord is speaking today through my heart. I love you and appreciate you, and I'm so thankful to be in covenant relationship with so many of you. You keep praying for me. Pray for me every day. Let me pray for you right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for um, our brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray for anybody watching that's struggling right now, that's dealing with uh, issues that are beyond their control, or maybe something that's just been an angst in their soul and they don't know what to do with it, that God, you would just release them from that. And Lord, that every crooked path would be made straight and that you would bring uh, to our remembrance the things that your word said by the Holy Ghost and that you would quicken us alive, Lord, that we would be able to have uh, uh, words that are seasoned with salt and that our spirit would be so greased up with the Holy Ghost and so oily with the presence of God that we would do everything we do with the grace of God and we would do it well. And today, this is my prayer for you. In Jesus' name I pray it. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a fantastic day. Love all of you and hope your day is warm. <laughs> God bless.